Welcome to Global Mapper. Hi, my name is Emily, the content writer here at Blue Marble Geographics. I know many of you are just starting your journey with Global Mapper. In this video, we're going to explore the highlights of the software to give you a foundational understanding of the tools available to you. I'm going to take you on a brief tour, show some of the most popular tools, and share a few tips and tricks. Before we dive in, you may notice my interface says Global Mapper Pro. There are two tiers of the software. Global Mapper is the base that provides many of your standard GIS functionalities, including vector editing or contour creation. Global Mapper Pro is a second license that builds on top, unlocking advanced editing tools, including ladder processing and photogrammetry. Throughout this tour, I'll point out when a tool is a pro feature. Now let's get started with the tour. I'm sure one of the first things you notice are all these buttons up top. These toolbars contain many of Global Mapper's features and are grouped by function. There's a scripting toolbar, digitizer toolbar, or terrain analysis. This setup is customizable. You can remove or add toolbars, or click and drag to reorder. If you'd like to reset the positions, navigate to the View menu, then select Toolbars, and Restore Toolbar Position. In addition to View, there are numerous menus that contain the complete collection of analysis tools, exporting options, and help documents. Also in the Help menu is the License Manager. This gives you the option to activate or release your license. If you aren't sure where a tool is, use the command search toolbox. You can search by action, name, or category. I recommend docking the search box for easy access. I'll do that by just dragging and dropping on an arrow. This works for pinning any window in Global Mapper. You can access the help docs for each tool here as well. Another important feature is to navigate to the configuration menu or this wrench icon. This allows you to edit the default settings in Global Mapper. This includes measurement units, the projection for all data within your workspace, and data display options like legend or scale. Now that you have an idea of how Global Mapper is set up, let's load some data. On the Start screen, you can press Open Data Files or press the file icon and select the desired data. Alternatively, you can simply drag and drop a file. If you want to load a specific file type, navigate to the File menu and open the specified type. Global Mapper currently supports over 350 different file formats. Our goal is to be able to load any data you can throw at it. I'm not going to scroll through all of these, but I wanted to give you an idea of the versatility Global Mapper offers. If you're in need of some data, we've got you covered. This little globe connects to online data sources. Global Mapper offers access to numerous online data sources, like the USGS or World Imagery. Users can borrow popular sources, save their favorites, or connect to their own custom source. In addition to the numerous free sources, users can connect to premium sources if they already have a subscription with the source. If you'd like to use this data offline or perform analysis on it, you can download a sample to your computer. Now, if we direct our attention to the left side, the Control Center manages the layers within your workspace. Checking and unchecking this layer will change the visibility of it on the map. You have the ability to further customize the relation between Control Center and the map view with layer order. In other words, you can decide you want the top layer in the Control Center to be the bottom map layer or the top. By right-clicking the Control Center, you can select Display, Layer, List, and Reverse Order. In this case, I have it displayed in standard order. The first layer in the Control Center is the base layer on the map. A second piece of this can be found in the configurations under Vector Display. You can determine if you want the layers to be shown based on order in the list or by type. The first option will always load vector layers on top of raster layer, no matter what the order is in the Control Center. The option I've selected relies on the control center order. Moving back to the control center, with a layer selected, you can select all features, view attributes, or zoom to the layer. If you right click on a layer, you'll be prompted with more layer specific options, including viewing the metadata or other options. In this dialog box, you can change the feature style, such as line, color, labels, or other layer specific options. Within a map of Global Mapper, your mouse becomes a tool as well. The standard cursor is a move tool. This will pan around the map. Next is zoom, which will zoom into any location you click your cursor on. You can also click and drag to create a box to zoom to. Within the next toolbar is a digitizer tool for creating and selecting features. When this tool is activated and you're stuck on something that's selected, you can press escape or deselect to clear the selection. The feature info tool will show the attributes of any feature selected. On raster data, it will show the pixel value. In any of these mouse modes, if you want to move around the map and have a physical mouse, press down on the center wheel and drag to pan. Scrolling the wheel will zoom in and out. 
Now let's explore working with points, lines, or area features with the digitizer tool set. In order to edit vector data, the digitizer we previously discussed will need to be activated. Since version 26.1, the collection of vector tools have been consolidated from multiple toolbars to this toolbox. Here I have a collection of partial polygons. If I want to split a polygon, I'll select Create Line Feature. I'll add vertices to form a boundary, and when I'm done, I'll right-click to end it. I will then need to create the feature by either creating a layer or adding it to an existing layer. I can also view the vertices that make up this layer with this Display Vertices button under the Edit menu. When I select the vertex on my new line, I can move it or add a new vertex. If you right-click on a selected feature, you'll be prompted with a context-specific menu of analysis options. Right-clicking anywhere on the map will give you quick access to a context-specific menu of the options for the map as well, dynamic to the type of features you currently have selected. Advanced feature analysis tools such as Range Rings or Kogo can also be found in this dialog box or the digitizer menu. A data point is more than just a coordinate. Each feature may contain other information, the I in GIS, so to speak. Attributes can be viewed on an individual feature level with the feature info tool that we touched on earlier. This attribute editor here in the control center allows us to view or sort all the features in a layer. In this example, I still have the partial data loaded. Each area feature contains information such as acreage, address, and land use. You can calculate a new attribute in the calculator such as converting acreage from square miles to meters. These attributes can also be visualized as a thematic map. Right now, I want to visualize the parcels by their land use. If I double click on the parcel layer, I'm prompted with the Vector Options dialog box. Then I go to Area Styles, and here you have the ability to determine how you want the area features to appear. In this situation, I want to apply styling based on attribute value. Using this dropdown, I will select the value I want to display. I could visualize acreage or tax value, but I'm going to use land use. I will click on Load Values to pull all the land use options. You'll be prompted to customize the fill and line styles, then asked if values should have a random color to start with. I'm going to select Yes here. There are nine land use types, so I can choose a palette from the random colors to pick from. Once I select OK, you can see the list is populated with different uses, each with their own color. Hitting Apply or OK will result in styles being applied. To add a quick legend, so we can understand this map, I'm going to click on the configuration or little wrench, then display options and map legend. In this situation, I want a legend based on loaded vector types. Whether you're working with an elevation map, satellite imagery, or an ortho photo, Global Mapper has a wide range of analysis tools that include raster classification or raster calculator. With a Global Mapper Pro license, users can also vectorize raster. This lake, for example, has been turned into an area polygon based on color. Also included with Pro is the Global Mapper Insight and Learning Engine. This tool uses deep learning to detect objects and land cover classification. Current models include land cover classification, vehicle detection, and building detection. In addition to the plethora of raster analysis tools, there's a wide variety of terrain analysis tools in both the terrain analysis menu and these toolbars. To start off, I want to highlight this shader dropdown. Visualize your terrain model based on attributes such as slope. There is an option to customize your own shader. While the shaders can give you an idea of how the terrain looks from top down, the 3D viewer provides you more control over your perspective of the layer. Take your data a step further with options to record a fly through, walk through, or simulate water rise. Gain an even better understanding of your terrain with the path profile tool. This takes a linear slice out of the terrain to analyze changes in elevation and slope. Additional analysis tools include line of sight, volume calculation, and watershed analysis. One of the most common terrain analysis workflows is contour creation. Once a terrain layer is loaded, click the Create Contours button. Once you name your layer, you can decide the interval for contours. There are a variety of other options, including smoothing the contours or discarding short contours. I've chosen to have my contour space 20 meters apart. The contour interval multiplier or index contour determines which contours appear as bolder lines. After I check the remaining settings, including discarding lines shorter than 20 meters, I press OK. If you have Global Mapper Pro, some additional terrain tools include terrain painting or creaking. Moving into Global Mapper Pro specific tools, Pixels to Points is Global Mapper's photogrammetry toolset. In the letter toolbar, we'll open this drone icon. 
You'll be prompted to either use the wizard, which will walk you through the process step by step, or the main window. In this example, we will use the main window. By right clicking in the input images box, you can either select your drone images from a file or images that are already loaded in the workspace. I'm going to pull the images from this workspace. To then orient these images, we'll load ground control points. The GPS location of ground control points can also be selected either from a point layer or a text file. These points can then be manually or automatically placed in drone imagery. I have a point layer already in my workspace that I will load and then place in images with the Auto Place tool after I've defined the target in the image. Now you can choose your desired output, point cloud, ortho image, or 3D mesh. If you're looking for a more in-depth tutorial on processing drone collected data, be sure to check out our Pixels to Points course, a self-paced online class. I've included all of this information in the description, so be sure to check that out after this video. Whether you have LiDAR collected from a drone or scanner, or you have generated a point cloud in Pixels to Points, Global Mapper makes it easy to classify it for further analysis. I have a sample LiDAR point cloud of a reservoir in Washington currently loaded. Going back to the same LiDAR toolbar as Pixels to Points, we can also find tools including LiDAR QC and LiDAR filtering. This shader can display the point clouds by attributes such as RGB values, elevation, or intensity. Right now, it's displayed by RGB values. If I switch to classification, it's all gray since it's all currently unclassified. There's a classification dropdown. This contains tools for manual classification, automatic classification, and segmentation. We're going to explore the automatic point cloud analysis tool. There are quite a few built in models, including ground, vegetation, building, and power line. You have the ability to refine the models to create the best fit for your data. In addition, you have the ability to create your own classification by training a custom model. If something has a consistent property and shape, you can check this Enable Custom Feature Models box and train samples. For time's sake, I've already classified this set of data, including ground, trees, buildings, and power lines. There's a lot you can do with this point cloud, including thinning, aligning it to control points, or adding color values from a raster layer. I'm going to quickly show you how to create a terrain layer from this LiDAR point cloud. With my classified point cloud loaded, all I care about for creating a bare earth model is the ground. So I'm navigating back to the LiDAR toolbar and click Filter LiDAR Data. Currently, all of the classifications are being shown. I could go through and uncheck each classification except for ground. But to be more efficient, I'll right click this classification window and select Uncheck All. Now, I only need to recheck the ground class. Once I hit OK, the point cloud will be filtered to just the ground. This does not delete the points, and I can turn it back on at any time. Now that I'm only looking at the ground points, I can generate my terrain model. I'm going to open the Create Elevation Grid tool and ensure the correct layer is selected. After naming the new terrain layer, I'm keeping the grid type as elevation. I'm going to select Binning Minimum Value as my grid method. This ensures the points used when creating the grid are most likely to be true ground. The grid distance criteria is going to remain loose. I will leave the rest of the settings in their default state and hit OK to generate the digital terrain model. Now there is a DTM that can be explored in the 3D viewer, path profile, or processed further with any of the numerous terrain analysis tools. Once you've worked hard to complete your workflow, it most likely needs to be saved, exported, and shared. Looking up in this top corner, there's a big Save button. This saves the Global Mapper workspace, essentially all the work you've done on your computer, including the paths to the files in use. Why does this matter? If you go to Share a Project for others to view or edit in Global Mapper, you have to be sure to share all of their supporting documents with the correct path. Otherwise, there won't be any data to open. An alternative to this is a Global Mapper package file. When you navigate to the file menu, select export and then package file. All of the different layers of data in the workspace are bundled together in one convenient file, .gmp. Another common export for sharing is a geospatial PDF. In this format, you can share a snapshot of the map, but the geospatial components are retained. In the same export menu, you can see a wide range of other export file types based on data. If you're looking to export one specific layer, you can right click and select layer, then export layers to a new file. You will then be shown file types specific to the selected layer type. I hope you now feel more comfortable navigating the Global Mapper interface and tools. If you're interested in a more in-depth tutorial, be sure to check out our training resources that I've included in the caption below.
In-person and virtual instructor-led courses are held throughout the year and dive into the specifics of your workflow. Our online classroom offers self-paced lessons about using Global Mapper, including automating your workflow with scripting and pixels to points. Be sure to check out all of these great resources. If you have any licensing and technical questions or want to upgrade to the latest version of Global Mapper, be sure to reach out to our team.